just a few things about the resolution you see in your board packet. We had wonderful news earlier this week in meeting with Matt and Liz, and that is our estimate for the amount of funds we receive from Washington State, also known as State Match. That estimate has been revised upwards to $11 million. So we learned that Monday, and we quick went to Pacifica, which is our dear legal counsel that helps to support you in drafting resolution proposition language. And we revised the uh, proposition to reflect that. So your resolution will reflect the bond amount of $150 million, which we previously discussed. And our team will discuss what we think would be included and answer your questions about that tonight with an added uh, receipt of $11 million from Washington State. Now keep in mind that the, the burden is still predominantly borne by our local taxpayers. So that's about 94% or so of the aggregate project uh, will be paid by local taxes. Uh, but that's not to say we are not more than pleased to see an additional $4 million come through. So the other piece that we uh, modified the resolution and proposition language to include is uh, just some additional language about if funds are available that we would like to make some HVAC upgrades at boarding middle school. As you know, that facility uh, was built in 2008 without air conditioning, uh, and it struggles to move air, quite honestly. So uh, it's very not comfortable for our students and staff. So if we get into this project down the road and find that funds are available, we would love to tackle that issue. The other piece that we felt like it would be nice to tackle, we put field improvements at Boarding Middle School listed. Um, and kind of the conception there, our students go outside every day and shoot hoops during lunch. Uh, but they do so in the road behind the school. Uh, and so we can get them out of traffic and harm's way by putting blacktop or asphalt where the tennis courts were sighted to go. If down the road you decide to put portables there, well, great, that's already set. Or if we want to modify tennis courts, we can easily put a covering right over the top. But it will give students a place to recreate. But we're listing in the resolution of proposition, those are kind of, I think we said, if possible or funds are available. Other than that, uh, there's a lot of whereases and legal language attached to the resolution. We are limited uh, to the amount of words in the proposition uh, to 200 words, I believe it was. So our attorneys took the entirety of that several page document resolution and condensed it into 200 words. So you see those uh, for your review tonight. They'll be up for your consideration a week from today. So you'll actually have the opportunity to take action next Thursday. The only other document uh, that you haven't seen yet uh, upon your approval, we'll have to draft what's called the explanatory statement, which is much of the same language in terms of describing uh, our proposals and such with one more piece, and we'll add the estimated price per thousand or the estimated cost to the taxpayer. But that doesn't go in the resolution or proposition, only goes in the explanatory statement. And Trevor, part of his work today, will kind of discuss a little bit about updates in the, the bond world, interest rate world, and what he thinks the implications are for us. So hopefully that answers a little bit about what you see before you. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have, as long as they're not too legal or technical in nature. <laughs> 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 so when you do that to the outside basketball, will it be an actual full court or half of the court? We, full. Oh, 
Good, because then you need to release on the weekends you can pick up games you can do this as another asset. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. We believe a full loop. Okay, great. Yeah. I, I think we should have made uh, as many assets for the community mm -hmm. for the Good question, thank you. Bonnie, or 
or I can jump in and just run through the bond budget. The bond budget uh, bond. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so this page here is the overview, and uh, the column that is highlighted is the updated budgets, and the next few pages are the backup for those, uh, those budgets. And so um, what we'll do is we'll walk through each one individually and we'll talk about some different um, possible adjustments to the budget that we can make. Um, but I think what we want to highlight here is the very bottom line. So uh, when we look at the, the three uh, large projects of the new elementary school, and new high school, and the addition at uh, PTR, we have a subtotal for how much those cost. And then we have some other things we know that we have to do as part of these projects, which is uh, we have to uh, pay for some of the debt on the property next to the high school that we purchased. We have replacing turf at the stadium that needs to be done. And then as part of the high school project, we need to relocate um, the six portables that are out here by the corner. So we have, have those covered. And you can see then the total of those is about $157 million. And we are proposing a bond of $150 million, which is the same number we were talking about. And we are saying that we think we should allocate $7 million of that $11 million state matching funds towards these projects. And so um, with that, you end up, as we talked about last time, we're not in the red anymore, we're in the black. So we, we now can, you know, everything is balancing and working out. And that leaves the additional four million of state maps that we expect to get as some of those things that everything works out right and you have the ability to do some of the other projects you were just talking about. Um, Sure, we'll come full. We can we can make some fine tuning on that as needed. 
but we know that the expectation is we're going to do everything within our power to try to build these four classes. We're going to design them, we're going to permit them, we're going to ask the contractor for a price for them. So all those things, we want to leave some money in the budget for the soft costs associated with designing that and to not, uh, not subtract quite as much um, money out of this, I believe, if I'm correct, the 86 million that we have on the cover page for, is that correct? Is that what we have? Where do we have? We have the 84 million, the 84 million, good, okay. So we didn't subtract quite as much as maybe you could if you subtracted out the, what I'll call the hard construction cost, which is what we're saying the 1.7 million is and all those extra costs, which is an additional, say, 40, 43 to 45%. And so um, the reason, and again, the reason we're suggesting to structure the overall estimate this way is to give you the most flexibility when you get that price from the contract, because we know we want those classrooms if at all possible. Um, did that explanation make sense of just the big picture of how we're structuring these things? And then we can dive into the detail of each of these items, if you like. Is that making sense? Mm -hmm. Just because these percentages build on each other and it ends up being quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, hopefully that makes sense. And so the in this scenario that we're presenting here, the way that um, I think we would, uh, we could frame this similar to what we were talking about before is that we are going to be building a new elementary school for between about 620 to 720 students. And depending on how the pricing works out, then that's where we'll land. So we know we're going to get to at least that 620 number, and we're going to do everything we can to try to get to the 720. Make sense? Mm -hmm. OK. Do we want to jump into each of these items then? OK. All right. Fair enough, let's start with the, very, the first big one, the 1.1 million. So this is the same, uh, same summary we had before. We've, we've reformatted just a little bit so it's easier to kind of track our markups. That 1.1 million is essentially um, a series of small, I'll call it construction related changes that are really, I would say, invisible to anyone using the building. So they're not changing how many classrooms you have or um, any functional thing about the building. They're just making small clarifications that are the type of clarifications that are really common every time we go through a budgeting cycle. And so some of the things that are specific to that is we just tweaked a little bit some of the uh, initial percentages of how much interior window we have. We adjusted a little bit the type of insulation. Um, of, we changed the uh, construction material for some of those few of the interior metals from aluminum to steel that, that's a little bit cheaper. So it's stuff like that that are things that you're getting same quality, same end result, but just making adjustments. And we could go through more of those, but I'm, they're the type of adjustments that usually, yeah. Does that make sense? Is this making sense? It, or? Makes, it makes sense. The skeptic in me has a question. Yes. <laughs> and that is, why, if, if these are items that you could reduce the overall building cost for and not affect um, the quality of the building we're building, yep. why didn't we start here? Why didn't we start there? That's a good question. Um, <laughs> yeah. So at, at this level of design, what we usually do is um, we have not actually designed every single space to the nth degree. So for example, we haven't designed like this is the exact perfect spot for this particular interior window. We have made uh, some design, like for example, we have a better sense on some of the classrooms, but not necessarily all the others. So then we also have an allowance for how many we think we need in addition to what we've fully designed. That allowance is what we can tweak um, because we, there's a range of what we see as very common within schools. And so we can adjust that allowance to, and we don't feel like we're going to have to compromise anything. And, um, you know, the insulation, for example, there's um, a 
type of spray foam insulation that's a really nice to have if we can't have it because there are some benefits in terms of just air leakage through your exterior wall but it's not crucial and a lot of schools don't have it and so we started out with that a little more expensive at this stage we're thinking well maybe we can't do that but we're actually technical we're going to revisit it i'll tell you later on but both ways meet the code requirement and are high quality so that's how that came about so and there's other what i'll call allowances in the initial estimate that we have also adjusted and that's part of these things so um, and one thing i mentioned at the board meeting is that it's not a linear process either because I mean, their office needs information back from the cost estimator to make some group decisions with the district of how to move forward so it is a, a kind of like move forward to design pause price it make some adjustments move to the right and then keep moving forward so i just wanted to make sure that we remember that it is part of the process is completely normal and they need feedback you know of, of what's a little bit more expensive and, and what's not to move forward and so these are the milestones that we are critical for that design process but it does because I mean, it does look like a significant amount of money it's not like they're not doing their job yeah. <laughs> i wanted to be clear it's exactly what they should be doing and, and i appreciate that i appreciate the explanation most of all because i just never having gone through this large of a project mm -hmm. um, just kind of curious as to those right i appreciate Sense. it very yeah much. And with so each the Taj Mahal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm thinking, is the difference between a Cadillac and a Buick, but a Buick's still a really nice car. <laughs> so, I mean, we definitely look at maintenance, and so when we talk about you know those kind of levels, whether it's spray insulation or you know we talk about it, anything that affects maintenance or HVAC, like you're having problems with you know facilities that have maybe a subgrade, you know that they saved X amount of dollars to be able to get the initial. Um, mechanical system in, but in the long run, it might have made more sense to mm -hmm. install a different system. And so the, those are the things that you know we're all looking at right now to make sure that that life cycle cost is really taken into consideration. So, for example, there was a there was a suggestion. You know, we could meet code with a slightly different mechanical system mm -hmm. that would have been cheaper. We yeah. could have been a little bit cheaper, but we said, you know what? We know that the system we're proposing is more proven. It's been used for 20, 25 years by a lot of school districts. And so um, we didn't change and save money. So we tried to really focus in on things that were allowances and, it, and really things that aren't going to affect quality at all. And that's what, that's what this 1.1 million is. Um, some of the other things that are listed here are, um, are adjustments in sort of uh, things that were uh, desired. So the, the next one is music classroom and stage to share space. So um, we'll have a plan and we can maybe look at it on the plan, but in this case, um, common in a lot of elementary schools is that the music room and the stage are in the same space. Um, we started at the design, the committee felt like, you know what, if we can do it, we would really like to be able to have a stage that's separate from our music room, maybe make the stage a little bit smaller, but that allows us to uh, not have to move music classroom stuff off the stage when we have performances and stuff like that. So it is a nice, nice thing. We put it on the list here, and we figured you'd probably want to chat about it tonight to be able to say, you know, it, it is something that we should be considering um, to maybe not do just to be able to allow us to focus on the most important things. Um, we don't need an absolute hard and fast let's make this final final decision right now we we want to say this is probably where we're headed february the bond passes probably time to have another chat and then we can kind of look at this again um, and so i don't think you should feel like you're making a final absolute decision on this at this stage it's just a matter right now um, it's hard to, hard to conceptualize if you haven't been through this process before, but at this stage of the game, there's still quite a bit that's malleable and that we can adjust at the next step of design. As, as Liz said, we went through a certain amount of design, we're now on hold, and we're waiting until the bond passes for the next steps, and then at that point we have opportunities to adjust and tweak. Um, 
I think that it's probably good to think that there are going to be some some little things we're going to need to talk about that could be a little bit challenging, and this will be one of them in terms of okay, maybe there's some small compromises we have to make. So it's not some conversation that need to be had after February, but even in the next four months, we'll have a little bit clearer picture of the economy, and then we'll have we can map out a time frame for when exactly we need a hard decision on these items. And then at some point we'll map out that time frame and we'll make the hard decision by that given time. Um, so that's similar with some of these other items on here. And part of the reason some of these things are on this upper list is they don't all really make for good uh, what Liz was describing as bid alternates where we ask for a separate price. If something's too messy, complex, involves a whole lot of different little changes that doesn't really fit very well for a bid alternate. So that's why at some point we'll have to make a decision to say, this is too messy to ask the contractor for an extra price for this. It just needs to, we just need to make a decision and move, move forward. Um, and that would be true, for example, the, the reduce the size of the artificial turf field. We put that on the list. We start out with an artificial turf field that's um, like adult size soccer field. A lot of elementary schools have, have a smaller size soccer field. And so we kind of suggested this could be something we could consider reducing. This particular one would probably work pretty well as an alternate. So I think this is one I would say moving forward, we can probably say, hey, let's go ahead and get a price for increasing the size of this. So no matter what, you get an artificial turf field, we just kind of work out later on exactly how big it's going to be based on how the price comes. Is the full size comparable to the stadium turf? Yes, it is. It's slightly, I mean, it's, yeah, it's very similar. It's very similar, correct. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. So it would be a third of that. Yeah, reducing that by a, by a third. So you, you could you could play youth soccer, no problem, stuff like that, especially, you know, the younger ages play the, the short direction anyway a lot of times. So right. there, there's still a lot of great usefulness for it, plus for PE. But, yeah. okay. but again, but that you one. Would, you could lose the revenue mm -hmm. of renting it out as a. You could. I mean, I just know yeah. because they're always looking for soccer yeah. fields. Yeah. And, and I think that's a great reason to get an extra price for it from the contractor when we go to bid time. And that it would not be, not be very hard to do that. Um, some of these other things I think are, uh, you know, um, eliminate landscaping along the road from the roundabout into the school. We had just a small amount of kind of planting around there, everything. You know, we could probably live with just keeping it as simple as possible for now until the rest of that area gets developed. Um, the, there's one little section I'll show you of the uh, main hallway that we could just reduce a tiny bit and save just a little bit, a little bit of money. You'd never even notice because it's actually quite wide right now. Um, there's a little um, energy energy code vestibule, kind of a double door situation to keep the cold air out, um, that we can just adjust the design a little. I'll show you that on the plans. It really isn't going to affect anything. And then um, we came up with a way to kind of reconfigure the administration special ed area just a little bit. And we think maybe we can put some of the life skills uh, kitchenette if we end up needing that into the classroom rather than a separate space across the hall. So another kind of suggestion to just make things as efficient as we can and just make some minor tweaks. Um, and then the last one here is reduce the classroom uh, sizes by 25 square feet. So um, between 800 and nine, 875 and 900 square feet is the most common size for classrooms uh, around the area. So we're suggesting one thing we could consider is just taking one foot out of that. So if it was 30 by 30 before, it'd be 30 by 29. So it's a pretty small adjustment. And I think with smaller class sizes these days, I think it's uh, less of an issue than it used to be. Uh, so I'll put that on the list again. So I think we've run through that list now. Do we, I think we hit everything from, OK. Does that help to put that into context? And, Yes. Okay. For me, very much so. Yeah. Okay. Good. And I good. appreciate the on that. Yeah. Okay. All right. And so we can we can go to that here in a minute. Um, do you want to run through the other uh, 
other estimates real quick? There were not as many changes to those, so it's, it's going to be a lot quicker. Yeah. I, I did have a question. The change order contingency, mm -hmm. yes. 7, 8, 9%. Ah, yes. Great question. Okay. So um, for the new elementary school, we have 7%, which is the smallest of the three projects. The reason for that is because it is a brand new school on a brand new piece of property. So there are fewer unknowns that we would expect to find during construction. Mm -hmm. The high school, the highest percentage, because it's going to be, we're going to find stuff. It's guaranteed, no matter how hard we try to find it ahead of time, during the construction. So therefore, we need an allowance for that. And so when you're doing renovation work like that, it's just more complex and you're going to have stuff. So that's why we did that. And then PTR is kind of in between, because it's mostly just new buildings next to it small amount of remodel plus the connections in so we will find some stuff we don't expect it to be quite as much so we just dialed it back just a tiny bit previously we were carrying the nine percent but right now we just have to weigh the level of conservatism we put into the numbers and i think we talked before we try to strike that balance of being conservative but not going so far that you just can't afford it because we're being too conservative and the numbers are getting too big so that's the balance we feel is makes sense for those projects. When you say bind things, are you talking about, so when they built PTR, they just didn't realize how much the, the soil underneath was just muck, and they were surprised when they found huge whole trees from previous floods underneath there. Are you talking about things like that? Those are great examples. Okay. Yes, because, those are great because examples. I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't, pockets of organics. <laughs> I, would not, I would not count that That's out nice any place to... in Bellwood. <laughs> that is true, and we will we we will do a fair bit of exploration to try to minimize how much of that is uh, we call it unforeseen when we're doing construction. How much is unforeseen versus how much we try to anticipate a certain amount of that. Um, the other type of of things that we are gonna find, which is uh, we're gonna be demolishing certain portions of the school, adding back on in those portions and around it. We're going to be reconnecting in with new electrical services and plumbing. Yes. When we tear out walls and get into new ones, we will find stuff, even though we, we will do some in, quite a bit of investigation ahead of time. So um, three models are messy and you will find stuff. Um, I did a construction job once where there was no electrical, no electrical in that wall whatsoever. And somebody cut a hole in it, and there's live wires. <laughs> so I, I Perfect it. example. Perfect <laughs> example. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's a key difference. Um, the other difference that we made some minor tweaks to the way we calculated the uh, escalation or inflation. So again, in this economy, that's that's a tricky thing and I would be a billionaire if I was really good at predicting it but we do a pretty good job of trying to do our best there so what we did is we tweaked it really just a small bit so the percentages just decreased a small amount from before but we adjusted that feeling that we increased the percentage for the first year so to I believe we have eight percent for the first year and then we dial it back for any time after that to I believe it's about six and a half percent so what we're doing is we're saying, right now, construction costs are still going up quite a bit. Over time, they're gonna drop down. And we, but then, previously, we were carrying that inflation for a little bit longer time period. We've dialed back the time period, but we increased the rate. So it's, it's actually quite similar, but a slight decrease. Just because we're trying to figure out, again, strike that right balance of where we're gonna land. Mm -hmm. uh, come time to open bids. So hopefully that also makes sense, but that's why those percentages are just a little bit different um, than they were before. Um, and then I think the other thing maybe, you wanna click, uh, let's see, is the high school next on the screen here? Yes. Or, okay, so can you go to the next, there we go, high school, okay. So a couple things at the high school that we adjusted, um, the stuff up above is what we had before in black. The three red items are things that we had adjusted is that as we're connecting in the new addition over here, there's the covered walkway there and we're thinking, well, maybe we just 
continue a new covered walkway a little farther. We said, you know what, that's not crucial to do right now. That can be done a little bit later. So let's, let's go ahead and pull that out. Um, the next item on the list is temp gravel parking on the track. So we had originally put in allowance to try to see if we could convert some of that area for some temporary parking. We pulled that out for now, and we are just going to have to see when, when we can try to accomplish that. We think it's probably still something we eventually want to accomplish, but we're not going to count on it right away. Okay. And then the last item is really just... I have uh, concerns about that. Okay, good. There, okay. The parking, looking at the map, and we're eliminating quite a bit of parking, and it's already very tight right yeah. now. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we can eliminate it off the track, but then where are folks going to go and we're friendly with Safeway, but they're going to hate us. <laughs> <laughs> and there's not a lot of room at Safeway. No, there's not. There's not. It's filled in by mm -hmm. other commuters and our kids already. Yeah. And, uh, so I just, I know we'll come up with ideas, but that's a real concern. Um, unless we reward kids for carpooling or something and come <laughs> up with a new campaign for that. Yeah. But staff parking, you know, all of it kind of out here is taken up and yeah. so we can eliminate that out of the budget but we've got to come up with a plan. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. it's a fair point. It's yeah. a very, very fair point for sure. Um, the last one we'll show you when we look at the plans but we uh, we're able to kind of reconfigure things a little bit without getting rid of anything. Just reconfigure and looking at kind of, uh, we know we have to add quite a few um, restrooms with the, with the new gym. Uh, we already have a large new restroom we're planning as part of the addition. We had kind of a secondary one. We felt like, you know what, we can meet our requirements without that. So that was the only minor adjustment we made to reducing anything. The rest was a slight reconfiguration that just made it a little bit more efficient and we can show you that. So. Everything else is the same. Same science labs, maker space, gyms, wrestling room, all that is all still the same, no change. Um, have you talked to Curtis about the, the uh, plumbing in this particular area here? Um, the reason why it, I, I live very close to here and um, the city did not replace the, the pipes, the sewer pipes and things like that in this area. It is. I know one of the ones in the back there was clay. Oh, so okay. I'm just telling you, it's... It could be one of the things. It, yes. <laughs> yes. 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 It's going to go against that 9%. <laughs> <laughs> We've talked about some things. We haven't talked about that exact item, but we have talked about some similar things in terms of um, how the, the electrical service is working and the boilers and some right. of the other pieces are direct to the high school, but not that one item. So we can kind of... Right. Put that on our list. I don't know. The city, I know, makes plans, you know, like eventually where they're going to replace this and this and this. And this area is a, well, hasn't been one of them. Okay. Just, just to let you know. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's good to know. There, there is one thing that I'll say that we do have an allowance in the budget for is we have, um, let's say, hold on a second. It's not a big allowance, but we do have it. Let me find it. Okay, sorry, hold on. I'm trying to find it. Okay, site work. There we go. Okay, so we have just a small allowance for frontage improvements and utility work. And that's intended for utility work that is like connecting it with utilities in the street, stuff like that. So we have a small amount for that, um, figuring that, you know, most of it's already very developed, but um, so that could potentially be used towards some of that if we have to do something. Just fair warning. Yes, it's good to know. We like knowing things ahead of time, so that's good. Does the OPS play on the parking lot, that 100000 does that include some play equipment or surfacing for the elementary school? Or does that it would be surfacing else? and maybe relocating some play equipment, but not getting anything new. Okay. Um, yep. Some temp surfacing, but we haven't figured out exactly what it is, but um, yes. Gotcha. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because we're going to be taking over one of those playground spaces for the high school. Right. And so, yeah. Okay. Okay, so I think maybe we got through the budget stuff. We could probably flip to the drawings if you want. Um, is, 
Do we, I think we covered it. Okay. All right. Um, there we go. Okay, so I think this can uh, hopefully be pretty quick. We can start here. Um, so uh, what we have on this drawing up here, so this is the uh, first floor of the new elementary school. And I think I'm, well, I can point with my uh, pointer here. So I'm going to start here on the left-hand side with the yellow, two yellow classrooms. So we've been talking about the, the alternate for four classrooms. We're suggesting these two are the most likely ones. Frankly, it could be other ones if we decide. But uh, what we would do is we'd tell the contractor, as part of your base bid, bid everything except what's in the yellow here, OK? And then the yellow on two floors becomes that option. So that's pretty straightforward. One of the line items we had was basically just moving this energy vestibule from here back into here. We'll do some minor reconfiguration of this to make that work. And that's just a simple savings. Um, Yes, I took the, the red line off of here. I meant to have it, but basically just this little section of hallway right here, we're suggesting make it about one foot uh, narrower. It's already about like 14 feet inside, make it about 13 or 13 and a half, I think is where, where it lands. So still very wide for that main hallway. You get lots of, lots of kids going through there, minor difference. Up here is when we talked about moving some of the, uh, the special ed kitchen just into the classroom over here and then reconfiguring this just a little bit so some of the space moves to here and we can just be slightly more efficient and save, save a few, few dollars there. So that was the other line item. And then uh, the other thing we're talking about is currently we have the music room here and the stage room here. We're suggesting the music room would move on over and then the stage would disappear and we just reconfigure this area when we do that. So that would be the change uh, we're suggesting there for that line item. Well, I can see that correctly that the stage would then open up into the gymnasium. Yep. That's the that, that is. And then we have bleachers on the back side of the gymnasium here that can open up so you can have quite a lot of people sitting in the bleachers okay. uh, wow. for for a larger event for the for the school or community. And also I was curious on the sped kitchen, is yes. it is it desirable to have that in a separate room across the hall? Like, uh, it seems that having it in the classroom might be better for our teachers. So I was wondering if that was an ask of theirs. It was not an ask. We just kind of started there. Uh, we've done it both ways. Um, I'd say it is probably more common to have it in the classroom. So I think what we're suggesting here is very common. Um, so um, it wouldn't surprise anybody to walk into a yeah. classroom that has that. Yeah. Yeah. I apologize because I'm just, it's not getting through. Okay. <laughs> so when you talk about reconfiguring these spaces, yeah. you're not eliminating the square footage from the footprint of the building. So no. what would you do? I, we, we would do that, but but I didn't to tell you, we'd go through the whole exercise of redrawing this whole thing. We would okay. do it, but that it would, would be part of the magic that would happen after okay. February. Does that make sense? <laughs> okay. so we don't want to do all the magic yet. Okay. Okay. We can save some magic for later. Yes. 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 But we, we would make it happen. Yes. Okay. 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 All right. All right. OK, so I don't think there was anything. Let's see here. Is it going? No, maybe you can advance it. OK, this is nothing here. There we go. OK, high school. So this is probably good to talk about. So. Um, Basically, um, we had some space over here that we were allocating for some additional restrooms. After looking more closely at the code, and so we don't think we need these right now. They can be added later as part of the future addition for the locker rooms and gym that we're planning for here. So that's where, that was the thing we moved. And then this is uh, the uh, PE storage room. We think we can move it over to this part of the building here, still really close to the gym, et cetera. So, um, and then we don't have to, we can just uh, adjust how this hallway works. And uh, we can then make a small reduction in our area since that's the biggest driver in the cost. And everything else stays the same. Does that make sense for the high school? OK. Uh, let's see. Here we go. And just, just to reiterate, I think we looked at this last time, but the, the pink out here is the contractor's area as they're building this. Blue is kind of the playground space for OPS during construction. 
And this zone over here is that temporary place where we would do the temporary playground. And then the relocation of portables would become, would move over here into the uh, parking lot area. Any questions on that? Does the tree stay? <laughs> right now, these portables do not require getting rid of the tree, so we don't have to touch the tree to touch these portables. We looked at and looked at the length of space in that parking lot. There's enough space there. Um, okay, I think that's it for um, for those plants. Did did we cover what we need to on that? It's slowly making more and more sense. Slowly, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I know it's it's a it's well, a lot have, to digest. I have one more question. Yes. I apologize. It's okay. And this is so um, I don't as, this is very nitpicky little yes. tiny thing. Okay. Um, but I've learned that if I don't mention it, then we'll be doing the open house welcome and I'll be like, damn it, there's not enough stalls in the women's <laughs> restroom. So I, uh, in, at the elementary school, I do have a question because I see like what looks like urinals in the boys' bathroom, and then I don't see them in the ladies' bathroom. So oh. I don't want to. I'm That's at the elementary school, okay. uh, they're, second they're... floor plan. Okay. And oh yeah, I see what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. You're right. You're right. For some reason, there the the additional stalls are not shown in there, but basically the same number stalls. Yeah, stalls matter. Right they will, they, they will be there. <laughs> you can see if you look here, there's stalls on both sides, so it's gonna they will be there, yes. I trust you. And I trust you. But you can count on that. I guarantee you we will have <laughs> stalls there. Yes. I can guarantee that no problem stalls. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay. All right. Do we want to go to Trevor now? Any other questions before we do that? Are we, I guess, let, let's go back to the, can you go back to just the total summary of all the cost numbers? And then, and then, uh, which is that other PowerPoint again, sorry about that. I just want to make sure that we're now feeling comfortable with what is in that, uh, page one. Yeah. With what is in here. So the, the top three numbers here, the 84, 47, and 21 million, those are the details we just ran through. Mm -hmm. And the bottom lines from each of those uh, estimates that we ran through. That's what's in here. That's what we're proposing as the bond cost for those three projects. The others have a change from before. And then you can kind of see how that tallies up. Is that all making more sense? Yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that question, Matt, because for what we're going to be doing with your feedback option tonight is working on our website, our crafting of language, our materials, and it's all going to anchor around not only the strategies that Trevor will share with us, but also the information that Matt and Liz have provided. So now's a great time for any other clarifying questions, and we're going to move forward with this platform as our communication to the community about what they can count on and what might be extra if we're able to do that. We don't want to promise something that we're not able to ultimately deliver. No, I, I really appreciate the detail and what you just said because if I'm going to vote to make this kind of commitment, I, I want to be as informed as I possibly can um, because this is, uh, it's exciting, but it's also uh, here. Mm -hmm. And we also want you to feel as comfortable as you can mm -hmm. with the background behind the numbers, how we got to and, them. And, 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 and you've um, done a great job doing that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And now, how do we do this? Right. How do we pay for it? Yes. <laughs> I will guarantee you I do not have the right answer. We're going to talk about some concepts. <laughs> and I think Carrie, uh, Mr. Colleen, she should have been uh, maybe an architect or a drafter to like, pinpoint where all the rest of the stalls should be. You can't get anything past her. <laughs> well, well, thank you very much for uh, allowing me to be here and inviting me. Uh, my name is Trevor Carlson. I work on your behalf as your bond underwriter. And after February and the successful yes vote, uh, we will become uh, even more engaged in helping you access the capital markets, sell bonds, put money in the bank, 
so those folks can do what they uh, are planning to do with your guidance. So uh, just kind of a summary of, of my role and, uh, and what uh, my team brings uh, to the process. Uh, Ed and I have chatted a little bit about uh, just kind of some conceptual ideas that, um, that we thought might be a, a great opportunity for us to, to talk about uh, kind of voters and what resonates with voters and just kind of get our minds around some of those uh, topics. Uh, the presentation here is very, very long. Uh, a majority of it is information that you have seen previously, but I brought it just in case we had some details that we wanted to go through. Okay, so please uh, don't see the, I don't even know how many slides there are and think we're gonna be here all night. You've seen all of those slides uh, towards the, the latter part of the presentation. Um, Ed, do you, is there anything you want to say before I jump right in? Set the stage a little bit? Okay. Um, uh, the first slide that I've uh, put up here, there's a, there's a couple different, maybe four slides, from uh, voter survey research that we've done over the years. Um, I do recognize that this information is a little dated. We traditionally, for the last 20 plus years, have been on an every other year cycle to run this statewide voter survey. The last time we accomplished this was in 2019, 1921. Uh, we were in some interesting times in 2021. Uh, I didn't feel like going through the exercise and, and having the data points be, you know, an asterisk on 2021 because guess what? This is COVID response. Uh, and running through that over the years was going to be beneficial to anyone. So a major deviation, I think, from. Uh, the, the world order, so let's not go through the exercise. That being said, the messaging points specifically, uh, specifically this slide, have resonated extremely well for a very long period of time. These top uh, messaging items uh, have ranked very, very high, if not at the highest levels. So this has been very consistent information over time. Uh, and sometimes it's kind of funny when we go through this process, we get the survey results back and we're like, well, what did we pay for? The data is the same. Uh, but it does, I think, then give us a lot to, to anchor on uh, because the messaging topics are, are so relevant and consistent. So one of the questions we asked was, would you favor or oppose a bond measure for X, Y, and Z? The, the top line item there, basically CTE, skilled trades, has resonated, been at the top of the list for years and years and years. Ed, do you want to kind of dovetail in on that topic with kind of the conversations that you had recently with the group of Sure, so citizens? Wednesday night we had our Career Tech Ed Advisory Award from the Wording High School. Uh, Matt and his team uh, created just a wonderful presentation. I had an opportunity to share just a little bit about what we've been discussing. And I shared with that group that we have the same amount of career technical education lab space and classroom space as we did in 1986 when we were a high school of 250 students. So let that sink in, <laughs> the same amount with many fewer. And so when we're talking about, and what we learned in recent research is most graduates live within a 25 mile radius where they graduated, over 60%. And 83% live within 100 miles. So we can count on that we're, for the most part, preparing graduates for industry and careers within our local Pierce County, King County, Thurston County area. So what are those skill sets that are going to be needed? Well, when you compare that with the facilities available, we see a deficit uh, that's a detriment to learning students. So one of the championing messages was, we need help in that area. And as you know, this first phase significantly increases the amount of career technical education, science, STEM labs available for kids. So that's just as okay. one example. And so as the architects dream and design and bring this, we have to tell the story. And that's some of what we want to resonate so that their team, Trevor's team, Brittany, us, we're all thinking about how to engage the community in our problems of practice and think about what messages are we going to anchor around, just as a for instance. Yeah. And that's a data point that they just, their mouth's dropping. Like, yeah, it's the same amount. Yeah. And so this is the type of, of uh, curiosity that we need you all to have as you're, as you're thinking about what's the needs analysis. We looked at the pictures. We looked at the spreadsheets and the dollars. Why are you possibly going to vote next Thursday to accomplish that, right? What, what 
key pieces are going to drive the educational outcomes for kids, right? That is what will drive the yes vote. I guess another point that I probably should have started off with, let me just back up a second. Right, these are not already specific, right? This is statewide. But this gives us the opportunity to, to start to think about why, specifically for you in your community, what are those key messaging points? And it's got to be clear, concise, consistent. Pick a couple of these things that work for the scope of work that you're about to tackle and lean into those and be diligent with those and do not deviate. But you right, obviously know your audience. But exactly like the, the kind of the, the situation that Ed just brought up, right? Those are that's a great little bullet point you can kind of have in your back pocket when you're at the cocktail party and you can bring that topic up. Um, I mean those those are those are uh, extremely powerful messaging points, but just pick a couple because it's going to be a game of telephone. If if we if we go down the path here and we you know tell the story, I start it goes around the table, it gets back to me. It's going to be tweaked a little bit. So keep it clear, concise. Pick a couple, two, three things, uh, and, and hit those hard and often. Um, so safety and security is resonated very well. Um, tax rate won't increase for homeowners if the bonds are approved. Uh, I can basically never achieve that. In very rare instances, can I? But what we've tried to do and lean into with that concept is create tax stability. Right? Your debt's falling off. You're going to add some debt. It's significant if this passes. It'll be at a certain level, but maintaining that integrity of stability is one of the big drivers in the, the big goals that, that I bring to the table after February, when we actually accomplish and start selling bonds and, and locking in fixed borrowing costs. So that's a it's extremely important topic. Um, replace old inefficient heating and cooling systems. Uh, it sounds like some of that conversation was happening earlier when I was listening. Um, that resonates well. In, in, for example, uh, that's a great message to, to talk about with uh, the pollsters have divvied up and sliced and diced the data. Older Caucasian Republicans <laughs> love that message, just as an example. Um, so you know, know your audience and, and lean into those messages appropriately. Why uh, these uh, messages are on this first page, uh, the pollsters love to see uh, we talked about conservatism and, and kind of baking in contingency, right, with the co with the, uh, the contractors and the, the architects with the, the, the dollar prices. The pollsters are the same. 60% is our threshold, right? And they love messages that resonate 10 points above it. So 70% or above, like, go for it. Those are great. Conversely, things that do not resonate as well, Athletic facilities has ranked at the bottom forever. Again, this is a know your audience. If it's Friday Night Lights and you're in West Texas and football's everything, you probably lead off with building the brand new state of the art stadium, right? This is already know your audience, uh, but it doesn't resonate as well as quote unquote more important educational. But again, linking this in, the soccer field discussion, the size, um, the playability with turf, you, you know, the, the usability, if that's a word, of uh, the seasonality, extremely important topics that I think can um, show the, the thoughtfulness that you all have put into this, this process, right? So just, again, some things resonate well, some things don't. Um, just some examples. Yeah, sorry. Why do you think improved athletic facilities doesn't resonate that well? Um, that's a great question. So uh, this morning I was teaching a class at the ESD in Anacortes for their Business Manager Academy, and I was showing very similar uh, slides. Uh, then a, another slide that we have where technically you can have a Prop A and a Prop B. 
where, uh, and they can be contingent upon each other, but looking at the data, uh, usually something fails or they all fail. It becomes a very confusing message. Many of the instances uh, where there's a, a school district that has a Prop A that has a larger dollar amount for education, maybe a Prop B that's substantially smaller that's education focused, the education piece fails or the entire package fails. A and B. Uh, I just I, I think the the costs associated um, and I guess necessity in the minds of the average voter comes into play. This is that you. This is something you've done throughout Washington State. Yes, this is a, a, a statistically significant sample size of 500. Um, 95% confidence interval, plus or minus, like three or four percent. So it's it's a legit study that we that we commission. Is there any difference between small communities and large communities for this? As in small communities <coughs> usually rely on the school facilities for any recreational activity. That is a wonderful question. Um, in smaller communities. Uh, the school is a central part of the culture and leveraging, I think, the, the multi-use aspects of some of the things that I've heard, that I've seen being in, you know, in calls behind the scenes and, and not just tonight, uh, are really important for the community to, uh, to go above and beyond and invest. Yeah, I think it's, it shows, uh, you know, some prudence from the taxpayer uh, dollars perspective that you're thinking about not only, you know, your, your main focus of, you know, bettering those, those kids and by the time they pop out of 12th grade, they're ready to, to tackle life in their next chapter. Uh, but creating some of those opportunities for, you know, the off hour activities that um, that are just very popular, right? I mean, soccer is one of them. Uh, there's, there's soccer kids running around all over the place. Every, you know, it's rain, sleet, snow, they play. Uh, so I think that that, that uh, is a strong messaging point, Kathy, for, for you. And I think there's yeah. uh, some duality to some of these messages. So when we think, for instance, mm -hmm. about the athletic fields and space that we're going to add, there's also a safety and security element to mm -hmm. that. In terms of failing turf or not passing G shock testing or allowing adequate time for children to eat. Uh, right. and that serving children has been a challenge. We heard that last year, frustrations from families about mm -hmm. time to sit and uh, eat. So I think as we think about blending messaging, that's yes. very important that we get those talking points and clarity in our own minds so that we can lean in with those. Uh, that's certainly some of the partnership we're looking for Liz and Matt and, and you all as, as Brittany works to take some of these messages and ideas and help to pressure test. We want to look through these very lenses to see if we're all clear on the story that we're aiming to tell. Mm -hmm. Well, and that actually connects with the, the process we did with CFAC because we wanted to make sure that we could perhaps take care of more than one problem at a time. And thinking about all those things is important both for the school and, and the community and the kids. Yeah. In, in the uh, the process that you all went through was very transparent. Mm -hmm. and, and another thing that you can, you know, hang your hat on when you're having discussions with folks. And just, a, I guess, a little bit of a, a, you know, PSA slash warning, right? The school district needs to be extremely diligent in talking facts. Mm -hmm. The committee is your marketing arm. Do not blend the two. Or just sure say it out loud. <laughs> See, lots of nodding and understanding, but I, that makes me happy. Um, one of the, the ways the pollster likes to kind of uh, set a foundation is is uh, asking folks what they think uh, the, the grade of their local school district is A, B, C, D. Kind of Captain Obvious here, but the mm -hmm. higher the the rating that folks give the school district, the more favorable they then vote. Mm -hmm. So the, the important piece that, that you all do on 
telling the positive works that you do on an ongoing basis lays that foundation of excellence that will pay dividends. And I know you all do that, and that's something that, that Ed and the team strive to do, but making sure that that is front and center in the communication piece is extremely important. Um, we saw a little dip in the overall uh, uh, grading, and, and they like to combine the A and B together to, to kind of get that higher level in 2019. Uh, Right, putting on our time machine hats and thinking about what we've gone through the last couple of years. Um, a little bit of a wild card in trying to decipher what does the average voter think of the local school district. But I think in a, in a smaller community like yours, you're going to be able, and the, the citizens committee is going to be able to have a, a very outsized impact in the marketing of the, of the measure and making sure that the, the good work uh, that you all have done to get to this place is, is communicated. So I think, I think there's some positive momentum as we're kind of coming out of some of the struggles from the last couple of years. Yeah, we're, I think we're going to do the original campaign because heading into COVID, I think community opinion of our test results and where we would sit on that spectrum was pretty low. Um, and we've owned it and we've made a lot of changes to affect that, but I don't, you know, we haven't quite seen all the results yet, and so we're going to have to put a lot of effort in promoting that. Yeah. And the 41% of those who never had children in schools don't know enough to bring the district. We have that one person that said to us, and I've been counting this when I went door to door, that people go oil on the kids here. So it doesn't affect me. We have to have a really good message how. Schools affect the whole community, whether you have kids yeah. in the school or not. Kathy stole my thunder. I wanted to hit on that bullet point. That was one of the most important points on that slide. You, you nailed it. And, it, and it's, uh, it, you can frame it in lots of different ways. I love the way you described it. You know, it's a little bit of pay it forward. You know, someone had to pay for that school to get there when, when we were all young. We're doing the same for the next generation. Um, it, it's also self-serving from the yeah. standpoint of a uh, of your personal real estate. Uh, I would argue having a strong school district is a great asset if you ever need to move. <laughs> right? You list your house in a in a, in a district that has uh, excellence as the known factor for that school district. You're going to have more people want to buy your house. It is an important. Right, you know, people move to areas because of school districts. We don't have to name names, we know this. Yes, ma'am. Yes, and, ma and the school districts are also raising the kids that are going to be the people that those people then rely on, whether it's you know, their city clerk or their uh, people that run their store or whatever. I mean, because we are producing the people that they're going to rely on. So yeah, that's, that's an important point, I and mean, we want to make sure we're trying to take as many blinders off as possible. Um, uh, you know, obviously parents, they are key, they are usually yes voters, you have to get them to vote. Um, I guess the other uh, uh, kind of subgroup there, uh, employees, you need employees to go out and vote. And hopefully they see a lot of benefit in what you all are contemplating for Tuesday night's uh, uh, possible approval. Uh, you know, there have been many instances where bonds have failed by a handful of votes. You can count them on one hand sometimes, right? That extra effort is really important. Um, key education problems and just, you know, don't want to focus on, on negatives, but, you know, these are the things that folks we're focused on back in 2019. I'm really curious to see how this is morphed in light of McCleary. Uh, there has been a major investment on the local and state side to K-12. So I'm wondering how that will play out. Um, overcrowding has, has been up there as a, as a high factor. Um, 
teaching the basics, right? But it's, it, but it's very, um, I guess, diffused, if you will. There's, there's not a lot of high percentages on, on some of these factors. So I think, I think we're in a, in a decent spot as we, as we go through uh, and, and get into early next year. As the committee, well, and it is the school district also is thinking about the informational piece, um, but the committee on the marketing side, um, we've, we've tested some uh, and received, received some feedback from what's the main source of information for your local school district. Newspaper still ranks up there really high, but down dramatically from uh, a few years back, back in 2017, or excuse me, 2007. That number was 40%, it wasn't 19%. So that, uh, that yeah. focus is really diffused again. Uh, one thing that I think is, is a little curious is uh, that social media piece yeah, is pretty low. Everyone wants to lean into that Facebook group. Mm -hmm. It has to be multifaceted, really, is the, is the, is the takeaway. Um, I've, I've been a little, um, uh, it took some liberties in, in putting an O or an SD by these because I wanted to sum up the difference between the two. And you can argue whether or not you have kind of control, quote unquote, over school employees. Uh, <laughs> but there is a massive amount of, uh, of control, if you will, over your message, right? It's not all outside influence. So make sure you're using the right tools as you move through time. The internet. Oh. It's a very basic question. Yeah, these are these are um, <laughs> the internet. <laughs> it's a new internet. Uh, these are uh, volunteer answers. Oh. Mm. It's an open-ended okay. question. Okay. Okay. Yeah, this whole poster thing is fascinating. It's really interesting. Mm -hmm. So uh, to kind of uh, flip the the narrative a little bit. So this is the the main source of information people utilize. The next slide is, which venue would you prefer? How would you prefer to receive the information? Not where you actually get it from. Uh, look at the old school, you know, slap a stamp on it and put it in the mailbox. <laughs> yeah. It's just, it's the data. Do with it what you will. But I thought that was pretty interesting. Just kind of the difference in, you know, where people access it versus if they had it desire, this is how they would receive it. Um, the social media piece jumps up a little bit higher. But, you know, all these kind of emails, e-newsletters, uh, websites that, you know, things that you control are extremely important. Uh, just a little bit of, yeah, yeah, I don't want to get too much detail, uh, but, you know, social media, younger folks. Uh, Printed newsletter in the mail. It resonates a little bit better with uh, folks of a, a, a higher age group, rural areas, small districts. Uh, email from the school or the district, right? Guess what? It's parents, right? <laughs> um, uh, newspaper again increases the preference, increases with age, um, but just a little bit more color behind some of those some of those options. Uh, it really just provides solutions, uh, uh, right? You, you've got to lean into what is the purpose of what you're asking for. How does it benefit kids? That will win the yes votes. And slide nine through, I don't know how much, uh, is a summary uh, or a repeat of um, what was presented to you all some, some weeks ago. Um, I, I think when Ed uh, kind of teed me up to come up to the mic, uh, described or, or maybe wanted me to touch a little bit on just kind of market conditions and, and the contingency that we have built into our plan. Um, you know, as, as we've all experienced over this last year, a rapid increase in interest rates, we're st still seeing some pressure uh, the Federal Reserve met yesterday and raised interest rates on the short end of the yield curve again. We anticipate that happening again in about a month. 
Uh, inflation is stubborn. We've heard of the contingency that you have in the construction plan. It's real. It's, it's real dollars. It's painful. Uh, we're, uh, I, I think the Federal Reserve is, is trying very, very hard and has signaled they will go to uh, very uh, extreme measures, if you will, of uh, maybe inducing a recession to get this inflationary pressure under control. Could be a soft landing, could be Goldilocks, we could find you know, just the right answer. It could be a, you know, a harder full stop of you know, hitting the brick wall. We don't know yet. They're trying to thread the needle. Um, but as far as the financing plan, the numbers that we've described in the past are still, uh, they're still within the, the boundaries of acceptability and we don't uh, anticipate any major changes to that financing plan and the millage rate, tax rate discussion that we've all had in the past. Uh, but again, as, as we all know, it's our best plan and real life can come around and smack us around later on. So we'll, we'll do our best to, uh, to manage the unknowns and we've built in, uh, I think, appropriate contingency to move forward. So Houston, where I go. <laughs> Part of our marketing materials, we want to be transparent with what this would cost. As you know, this bond package uh, as a standalone would be about $2.84 per thousand. We also have a levy. Based on the increase in assessed valuation in the amount of new homes, our $1.88 that we estimated uh, is down about $1.72. <coughs> so the combined tax rate will be about $4.50. And when you compare that, if you looked on page 15 in your board packet with regard to historical, we can see back in 2012-13-14, uh, the combined tax rate was $7.58, $8.50. So a $4.50 tax rate, when you look at just the last 10 years or so with what regard to taxpayers here in our constituency have been paying, it's going to look less than it has historically. So we have that going for us. We also have the previous bond falls off the tax books in this year. So that is not an add on top. So there are some favorable talking points with regard to the aggregate tax rate. Uh, one of the pieces that I think our voters will just uh, maybe not see, so we have to be careful with how we articulate this, is why are we paying for new growth? Mm -hmm. Well, what you have to understand, the elementary school we're looking to replace has been here since 1968, mm -hmm. and it was built for 290 children. The growth has been here all along, mm -hmm. and so we're behind the curve with regard to what we have. So in our storytelling, we're going to have to just make that clear. And if you look long term, by 2030, the new growth is paying more taxes than the existing taxpayer is by that point. Because thousands of homes will come online. So those are some key ways we intend to tell the story, look at the historical, so people understand or have that context heading into this decision. But the, the big, that's not the bigger messaging. The bigger messaging right. is what problems we're trying to solve and this trigger is sure. it, for sure. what does this do for kids? Yeah. Yes. It's good that we understand that, though, because people always say things to me, like, you know, somebody told me, oh, well, I'm paying more for the levy, and I said, you know, the rate didn't go off, it's that your house is worth more, and therefore your taxes are, are, are more. You know, and so sometimes um, people play different issues than what the real issue is. And when they ask us, it's good if we can tell them. We would definitely want you to be equipped to, to know yeah, the yeah, answers. Sure. Uh, yes. We will have Trevor and maybe Ryan as well back on the November 29th CFAC meeting. So on a more public format, we'd like to share some of these key Great. information to what resonates and cost and things of that nature. So we haven't finalized that agenda, but we believe part of your feedback tonight will help shape the marketing and communication and we'll lean into those ideas on the 29th as a team. <coughs> Yeah, great. Thanks for bringing that up. It's That's interesting cool. to see the history of the past fail on awarding these bonds. Mm. Yeah, well, I'm a little that, surprised I, that it. Um, I can't remember exactly where that is. It's that right here, 14. Yeah. And then, the, did I skip it or the next page is the, oh, sorry, let me go back. Sorry, making everyone dizzy. <laughs> um, and Kathy, I think that was an important point that you brought up about assessed values going up, you're collecting a dollar amount, right? That EPO you know, of four years of 5.6, 6.5, 7.5, 8.6, that's the maximum, you know, it's a levy lid, 
that the voters approved, and you cannot exceed that. The assessed value jumps a thousand percent. Doesn't matter what the number is, you're still collecting a, a dollar amount. So the millage rate or the tax rate would, in that crazy example, would decrease dramatically, but there would not be an increase in taxes, right? And I think that's one thing that we want to make sure um, you're well equipped with because of the large assessed value increase that we anticipate you will experience between now and the 2023 tax year. You know, tax bills are not going up to that degree. Think of hoarding as a pie. The pie grew. Some of it was new construction. Some of it was the existing houses and the value of, of you know, as interest rates were really low, it was a desirable area, people wanted to move, housing prices went up, right? We're at all time highs on the housing prices. Assessed value is high, for the same reason. If the average, I'm just going to use some round numbers, if the average assessed value went up 25%, and I live here, but my house only went up 10%, everything else being equal, right? There wasn't a fire levy that was approved, there wasn't new bond issue somewhere and this is a very simple world that we're in nothing else changes my tax bill goes down Kathy lives close it sounds like mm -hmm. her assessed value increased at 50 percent average is 25 she has a bigger share of the pie her tax bill will go up right so it's everything is in relation to the average so, a great example, a few years back, Blaine School District, the assessed value went up 80% year over year, 8 zero. Tax bills did not go up 80%. It's just a redistribution of in the, a, a drop in the millage rate, because everyone collects basically the same amount every year. Cities can go up a little, it's all statutory, statutorily controlled. So if there's a little bit of increase that can be there. School districts, you're locked in. If you have debt on the books, it's a fixed borrowing cost. You know the principal and interest, that's fixed. Right, the big wild cards are like a sound transit. Right, that was a big hit, right, to property taxes, your car tabs, and you know, things, <laughs> things like that. Um, I know. I'm sorry, but it, it, it's but it's a topical one. Sorry, it is a sore, but it's topical, and I know that, and that's why I brought it up. Sorry. Um, I love the train. Thank you for doing what you do. Um, uh, um, but right, the misconception. Right, my mom called me this summer. She got her property tax or statement, the, the, not the tax, but the assessed value card in the mail. And you know it's going up 44 percent. So she's freaking out. And I'm in the car. I'm like, "Mom, this is what I do for a living. I guarantee your taxes aren't going up 44 percent." We had to walk through the process. So it's a it's a huge misconception, and it can um, you know cause some friction. So be aware of that. I feel be, like be I almost feel like we have to. You're going to have to put on uh, actual PowerPoint yeah. classes <laughs> because just saying it, I don't feel like a lot of people believe. We'll get it. You know, it's like yeah. you almost have to really focus on it and see it to understand yeah. it. I have literally heard this multiple times, and yeah. I'm still grasping it. It's there. I mean, I'm kind of feel it, but you know, to really understand it, to be able to explain it to somebody else, it ain't gonna happen. Yeah, that's I'm like, not. Yeah, I understand, <laughs> but if you ask me, it's just like, you just I know. Like, <laughs> it's a it is. Uh, it is a, oh, let me, yes, I want to see this one. Okay, uh, let's look at this column here, the year-over-year -year percentage change, right? Massive numbers, 18%, 10, 16, 25, we're anticipating another 25. Uh, sorry, 24. So we've already been through and are gonna experience again another massive shift. So it's not new, it's not like we were flatlined forever and this is a big bump. Mm -hmm. One thing that you can uh, urge folks to do is look uh, at their tax bills and 
see what those ta the actual dollar amounts of those tax bills have done over time. My uh, assumption, and, uh, and I know I'm right, is the tax bills did not go up 16%, 25%, and they will not go up 25% again. So seriously, go to the uh, county website, you can, everything's public, right? Everyone knows everything as far as assessed value. You can type in addresses, you can actually see the tax bills, and you can see the numbers for at least a couple, three to five years. And I went through this process with a voter uh, in North Thurston School District. They passed a bond February of 2020. Great timing, right? Because a couple weeks later, we were shutting stuff down. <laughs> But I, I literally had a conversation. This was before Zoom and screen sharing was so easy. So I'm talking to this potential, or this voter, and we're walking, we're looking at the screen. I'm telling them to navigate here and here. And we look at this gentleman's tax bill, and it actually was pretty level. It dropped one year, went back to kind of the same level, and then maybe increased a little bit. So just walking that gentleman through the process of the education, looking back and showing him that his tax bill in totality, right, and you control a small piece of it, right, there are a lot of other factors in a total tax bill, was relatively steady over like a five year time period. He was very thankful, he called the superintendent's office and said, hey, his wife and I, we're in. Right, that's a rare circumstance. <laughs> Uh, I can only do that so many times in a, in a day, um, uh, just based on constraints of how many minutes are in a day, but right, it, it goes a long way if you can go through that education process. So happy to, to help however we can. Um, hopefully you don't send too many one-on-one -on -one calls right away, uh, but happy to help. Well, I know for sure, I, I mean, I just know for sure that we're gonna have to be really careful how we present to the seniors because we have a huge number of low-income seniors in and so and they would not understand it. I don't think most of them just, if we just they just hear it. So I feel like it's going to have to be somebody's for sure. We're going to have to. You know, have a little tutorial of the yes. seniors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. have to they're there for lunch every day. Yeah. Yeah. We haven't uh, built some of our information or process around the town halls after the first of the year. So some of what we want to be thinking about is how do we get folks in and how do we share the message between these experts. Uh, we'll need some amount of kids and staff to discuss the, what's happening and what would what would it look like and sound like and think about how we tell the story. Uh, we do have a draft that we've shared with Brittany and just a way to engage around that mailer that will go home. And so through all the different channels, the poster boards, the communication, the emails, we want to just loop back to the why and the purpose, but make sure we're very transparent on some of the, the facts. And the cost is certainly one of those. And so we'll want to get your input, not only after the CFAC meeting, where they come and share publicly, but maybe tune some of the messaging. So, so what? So what if that resonates and what do we think we need to get out in front of? And what's the best modality to do that? And that's some of what we hope to do with the I like Both the five-day thing. I, I mean, that makes sense to me. The five yeah. That would be easy to, easy to right? check the history. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see what this means to you is. Look for yourself. Yeah. yeah. I know it was a long day from Seattle through <laughs> I-5 closure to Anacortes, and then it was all a wonderful day. I <laughs> it off with very fine people. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Wonderful day. Did you get to take a train? No transit. No, no, no train tonight. There's a tractor. And I want to publicly acknowledge Bonnie. She is always a wonderful hostess and always sets us up for success. So thank you. Thank you.
uh, procedures for nutrition, health, and physical education. Uh, it's the markup. Are there any questions? My only question was so the board that's mentioned on there, the peak, has that been started? We have had a group that has met with regard to wellness uh, oh, okay. and that has run through food, nutrition services and Cassie Cordelius has been, okay. according to, and there's some federal language that's been around for some time which compels that actually. Yeah, I, I just had never heard of it actually maybe. So it's okay. And I just had a question and you don't have to answer now, we did send it in advance, but I know we were coming close to that threshold or at least approaching that threshold for free lunches? That dropped. So once all the dust settled, uh, I'll throw out a number. Our aggregate last year was maybe 26, 27%, and we're no longer at 36%. Okay. Uh, we are less than that. I think we're closer back to the regression. Uh, I'll say around 30, maybe 28, 29. Uh, so we fell in that regard. Uh, we do not have clarity or predictability yet of what may transpire in this session. So Superintendent Rakedahl came out publicly and advocated for the state to cover meals. We know the federal government and USDA said no, uh, but we're not sure where that will go. But as we think about facilities, we saw a heck of a constraint. We went from serving 16 to 20 breakfasts to 160 breakfasts or the accessibility and lunch. So that's something we're watching very closely through the staffing and facility side as well. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion, information needed? Push through for a second, final next time. Um, that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And we are at the board comment section. I would just like to thank our our guests tonight for coming and explaining all of the hard things over and over again. I know it probably gets repetitive <laughs> to you, but sometimes it takes a few times to start sinking in for me personally. So um, I just appreciate um, all of you. Thank you. Yeah. And I just wanted to say, Brittany, I really enjoyed the superheroes. Yeah on the Facebook, Thanks. and I don't know if you realize it, but the bus driver you picked to stand in front of the bus, that was my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, that, awesome. <laughs> that was kind of fun for me. That's awesome. I love the student photos, yeah, just to pile on, just the images from all the schools. Um, celebrate Halloween and harvest, and uh, it's just a lot of fun. There's a lot of things to like. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, through our content, and I love that. Um, I love the FFA planting yeah. the pumpkins and having the kids. I mean, that I thought yeah. that was so, so cool. Yeah. It was like, you know, for them to do that, and then the kids all got to go over there and get their own pumpkins. I love that. Yeah, yeah. And Debbie and us checked on them during the summer. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Uh -huh. Maybe we can get the FFA to do that landscaping on our thing. Uh, yes. Yeah. 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 And, and I wanted to share one informational thing because I think it, you and I talked about the, the, the new horse. Yeah. Is it a the club Western or a school? Club. club. It's a yeah. club. Oh, so it won't help with our numbers. Okay. It's a club. Okay. Um, it did turn out that it's not just equestrian, it is other events, it's yeah. barrel racing and some things like that. Mm -hmm. I know that because I have a, have a barrel racer in my family. So. They, I, they, so they're doing a variety of things with, with, the, with horses and I think that that's a great yeah. um, new outlet for the community mm -hmm. that recognizes the variety of people we have here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and a new bowling program. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. I did run into those ladies after school and <laughs> thank them for being our inaugural team. And they were headed off to Daffodil Lanes, and okay. we're excited to see what they do. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, what do, I wonder what day they're going to be I asked uh, Coach Nasnik to let us know okay. and give us a heads up okay. so we can think about it. Yeah, I'd love to support them. Nasnik was a bowler, huh? <laughs> That's oh, <shocking>. <laughs> He's an 80s kid, Saturday <laughs> afternoon, he's a PBA bowling, uh, yeah, yeah, so we, we grew up in that bowling area back in the, back in the day. 
I'd like to give a shout out to our culinary program at the high school. They cooked last night, I'm assuming for the CTE Correct. group, and I got some photos of some amazing chicken soup and a vegetable pasta, and there's something else. Anyway, uh, just some fantastic food that our kids are putting out. I'm really impressed by them. Yeah. Very good. I also love that the football team has that tradition of dressing up for Halloween. I mean, yeah, I just think it's fun. fun for the, there's just something fun for the boys. I mean, he, they actually get them to do it, which is kind of amazing when you think of some of those high school boys. <laughs> oh, and shout out to the volleyball team for raising $3,000. Is that number right? I don't remember if I had the number correct, but it was a substantial amount of yeah. money for a bake sale. Uh, with a drink pink night, which was a lot of fun to be at. Um, and then to all of our sports teams who are having senior nights. Mm -hmm. I was there for volleyball again for that. And these I kids know. have grown up so fast. Mm -hmm. so, senior night was always one of my favorites. Yeah. A lot of heartfelt shout outs mm -hmm. to our staff, coaches and teachers who have supported them along the way. So proud of our team. I'm going to self-admit on senior night at volleyball, I, it took me a while to understand why four or five children are walking with walkers oh. <laughs> and wearing suspenders, yeah. and I didn't get it, but they were dressed as seniors. Yeah. Oh. So they had, they had wigs and rocking with walkers and canes, oh, and I just, I, I, I didn't get it for a while, but then it, it clicked, and well, my wife helped it click, um, and I thought that was hilarious. So wonderful spirit. <laughs> Just shout out to the community to please join our CFAC meeting at the end of the month. Oh, we yes. really want uh, community members, uh, even if you haven't participated in past meetings, you're invited. We encourage you to come, you know, learn about the the work that we're doing to support the growth that we have, and that's here already. And our staff members. I mean, there's Absolutely. been a few people that have shown up for the Yep. Whether you have they have such a powerful voice in the community. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Kids or no kids in school, it all affects us together. So, okay. With that, I will adjourn the meeting at 738.